I'm Rachel Godin for TV2 News at Kent State University. What does it take to land a job at KUOW in Seattle, Washington? I spoke with News Director Kathy Duchamp about the ideal candidate for employment and the importance of perseverance in the media job market today. For a demo reel, do you prefer a personal URL website where you can see the person's work, a Vimeo or YouTube links to stories, or something else? Uh, probably a URL. Okay. Um, when someone is applying for a beginning po reporter's position at your station, when you go to that person's website to take a look at the person's work, what types of stories do you want to see? What are you looking for? Um, I'm looking for a range um, from daily newscast spots to hard news features. So and it would be stories that stories that uh, are anywhere from like 45 seconds in length up to four minutes. There's a difference between, so what you need, if you're specifically calling like a public media newsroom, is we need people that can cover daily spots, daily news, breaking news, as well as, you know, in-depth deep reporting. You need to be able to do both. There's not the luxury of a large staff to just have people focus on just enterprise reporting. Okay. So I want to do both. So, you know, yeah, if you have a piece that you've covered out of college, are you kidding? That's fantastic. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Um, I have a pick four sequence of four questions. Should the person include the following? A stand-up montage. Um, no. A video Skype interview with someone else. Again, these are the questions you're asking are probably, you know, I'm looking at it from my narrow, narrow field division of radio. Mm -hmm. So I would, on this one, I want to see you be able to interview somebody, so I'd say yes. Okay. Um, would you want to see web extra content? Yes. Okay. Examples of mobile stories. Um, that they have done on their iPhone or Droid. Sure. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you would like to see on an applicant's website that I didn't mention? Um, published work that is, has run on a radio or TV station or a local online news site. How often do your reporters utilize phone or video Skype to interview members of your congressional delegation in D.C.? Zero. Zero. Um, we do over the phone, or we basically have people record voice memos into their smartphone and send us the audio. What is the salary range your station pays reporters that are coming directly into the market? Um, well, we don't offer entry-level field reporting positions. We have entry-level producer positions. Um, I'll just give you one number. It's, we'll just call it an average. Mm -hmm. So it's um, three thousand six hundred dollars a um, month. How much do reporters make? Four thousand a month. Um, Perfect. Is your station using multimedia journalists who do it all? Shoot, write, report, and edit their own stories. No. So we do basically, you know, audio recording, editing, writing and also having people write online versions of their story and take photos. So I guess, like, everything short of video. Right. Okay. Um, what model of audio equipment do you give your journalists? Um, it's basically we have them either use their iPhone or a Moramp okay. deck. What kind of editing software does your station use? Um, Adobe Audition. Okay. I use that, too. What's the most common mistake job applicants make in their demo reels, um, their websites? I guess the biggest thing, and this is, and it's not really a mistake, but I, I said it before. It's like I want to see published work. Mm -hmm. So just student projects, um, at least in our our um, you know newsroom, probably aren't enough. So it can be an internship, you know what I mean? But just something that's been on the air somewhere, mm -hmm. or kind of online somewhere where, you know, a mass audience can experience it. 
That makes sense. When you're interviewing job applicants, what are one of the one or two of the key questions that you ask? What are you curious about? And then, um, you know, um, I mean, we always ask why why radio. Right. Um, do you think there's a specific personality type that would really flourish in the public radio market? <laughs> you know what? It's right in between TV and print. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. somebody who's basically um, driven, um, deadline-oriented, um, but it has a sense of story. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, we, we don't want bashful people because you actually have to get in front of a microphone even though it's not a video camera um but uh it's really it's like what's for us what's more important than the personality is the story Mm -hmm. um which you know honestly is probably not that different in tv news either for the most part what advice would you give to university journalism students about to enter the job market um (laughs) have you know, it, it, ideally you would have a couple great internships under your belt mm-hmm. um, and um, do a lot of networking, um, you know, do things like this. Don't be afraid to make cold calls. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can, um, like attend like public media conferences mm-hmm. basically, and, and also be active Follow people on social media whose work you respect. Do you, does your station support uh, or pay for some of your journalists and reporters to go to these kind of conferences? Yeah. Okay. Um, are they allowed to go to as many as they want a year? Or are there specific ones that you like the whole station to go to? Um, we have, um, it's, it's kind of case by case, so it just depends mm-hmm. on where they want to grow professionally. So mm-hmm. we, you know, talk to people about what, you know, where do you, where do you want to grow? How do you want to grow? And so if it's, you know, more online stuff, there might be a conference or a workshop. If it's a beat specialty, you know, it might be some sort of workshop or fellowship. You know, we have um, somebody just, one of our reporters just went to an NPR Planet Money um, training on how to cover technology. So um, it just, it really depends on the station goals and the reporter's professional development goals and the budget, right? So I think we usually budget roughly $1,000 a year, you know? Yeah, okay. Um, I'm personally really interested in investigative journalism. Um, Uh How important is that in a daily life of a KUOW reporter? Public radio newsroom. Yes. It's an an area we want to grow in. Um, we, We do have one investigative reporter on staff and he doesn't have a specific beat. He just covers, you know, we kind of look at our editorial priorities and what, what, <laughs> you know, where we want to hold people accountable. And he'll focus on that for three or four months and then shift to other projects. So we have that model in place. Um, we also like to give all of our reporters the opportunity to do investigative work on their beat. Mm-hmm. Um, so it becomes kind of part of what they do. Um, you know, we provide training on investigative techniques. We usually, it's like every other year, you know, bring somebody in from IRE or NPR to help us learn. Um, I think, um, and again, so it's an area we want to grow in um, um, and have kind of a foothold in right now. Um, what we don't have, which people have expressed interest in, you know, it's basically somebody who is a data, data journalist with a personality. So somebody, a data journalist, is not afraid to talk to people. Um, do, we don't have that position right now, but that's something we aspire to. That's awesome, because I was just about to ask you if um, computer-assisted reporting is an important um, part in your daily role, and that would be the kind of journalist you're looking for, a car right. reporter. So, okay. Right. And, it, and again, it's like what's right now, it's one of those aspirational things. It all has to do with us and in terms of, like, you know, where can we find the money, how sure. can we sustain it. But, um, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. And so for us, a, a story doesn't end with data. That's kind of where it starts. And so um, we have... 
have, the way we've done kind of data journalism to date is um, we, we partner with um, organizations. So there's a investigative journalism kind of um, studio called Investigate West. Mm-hmm. We partner with them. Like they, they basically kind of dig up data and then we partner with them to tell the narrative part of the story and produce something that's online and on air. Um, so, and also, I'll be honest with you, it totally depends on the the reporter, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there are some people who aren't interested in data more and more as we have opening. That is important to us. You yeah. know, that would be a key competitive advantage for somebody coming in interviewing for a position. Absolutely. I can imagine that maybe like an unpaid internship or, I don't know, a paid internship where a graduate student or a student interested in data could come in and that would be maybe helpful. That sounds like, you know, maybe the way to transition or something. I don't know. Exactly. No, no, that that is exactly it. And so here's kind of where, just to give you kind of some advice, like we have have plans on that on the books. We have a problem right now is that we don't have any, we literally don't have places for people to sit. Oh, okay. um, and so, but I mean, it, it is an awesome way that I think somebody, you know, either in their last year, you know, of, of school or kind of coming out of it can basically, you know, pitch, you know, I, I would like to offer three months of time and you should ask to be paid though. Yeah. Uh, don't do things for free. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and like, here's something that I, where I think I can add value. I want the experience of working in a newsroom in a broadcast setting. Here's what I can bring to it. Right. Um, you know, that would be great. And what would happen is you'd be partnered up, you know, with a field reporter and you'd work as a team, um, which would be totally fantastic because you would basically, you know, I mean, I know you already learn learning field techniques, but mm-hmm. you kind of get, you know, um, that kind of real world experience and, and help us with data. And you otherwise, is there anything else you'd like to add? It's an exciting time to be in journalism. It is. Um, there are so many stories to tell and fewer outlets telling them. And, you know, the second thing I'd say is what will get you a job is persistence. It's just like it's persistence. The longer you can kind of hang in there and kind of drill down into storytelling, something good will happen.